ready if you are. We are ready. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm calling to order tonight's planning commission in the city of Emeryville. I'm calling to order the regular planning commission meeting for July 22nd, 2021, and it's 6.30. I would like to state the record that this meeting is being conducted by teleconference pursuant to the Brown Act waivers provided by the under the governor's executive order in response to COVID-19 state of emergency. During a public health emergency, City Hall is closed to the public. The agenda states that the public may view the meeting that may be live streamed on on live streamed online and on ETV channel 27 and provide comments by submitting them and provides comment by submitting an online comment form which will be read into record by staff the comment form can be accessed by going to this our city our main city of emeryville website www.emeryville.org and navigating through the planning commission page once there you'll see a link entitled submit an online speaker card the public can also have an option to in participating in tonight's meeting via zoom and may, may provide public comment during the meeting using the raise your hand feature visible on your screen or if you like if you're calling in press star nine the zoom call in information was provided on the post again and there will be a link on the planning commission agenda page as well roll call mr bryant would you um community developer director charlie bryant will you take roll call certainly thank you commissioner chafe here commissioner keller here commissioner mendez here commissioner simons here commissioner zepco is absent and uh, vice chair young here. So we have a quorum of five commissioners present. Now is the time for the public comment portion of this meeting. Anyone who wishes to make a comment related to the items not on the agenda should begin submittal of their online submit should have begun submittal of their online speaker card. Three minutes Vice will Chair. be allotted. Vice Chair T Young, we skip number three of the election. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't have any election notes in front of me. One second, please. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bryant, would you please uh, help me with the election? Sure, uh, I'd be happy to. Uh, this is the time for the annual election of officers of the commission. Uh, namely the chair and the vice chair to serve for the next uh, the next year uh, so at this time it would be appropriate to request a, a nomination from uh, the commission for a chair and a vice chair for the coming year and i see commissioner chafe's hand is raised i'd like to make a motion to elect the chair and the vice chair together as a single motion um, and in addition, I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Stephen Keller as chair of the committee and Commissioner Erica Mendez as vice chair of the committee. Is there a second for that motion? I'd like to second that motion. And are there any other nominations? Uh, seeing none, Vice Chair Young, at, at this time it would be appropriate to ask for a roll call. Or any discussion. Or any discussion. Thank you, Christy. If, is there any discussion from the group in regards to the selections that have been made? Let's take roll call. Like right. the, yes, um, sir. On motion by Commissioner Chafe and seconded by Commissioner 
Simons to elect Commissioner Keller as chair and Commissioner Mendez as vice chair. Uh, Commissioner Chafe? Aye. Commissioner Keller? Aye. Commissioner Mendez? Aye. Commissioner Simons? Aye. Commissioner Zepko is absent and Vice Chair Young. So at this point, it would be appropriate to uh, turn the running of the meeting over to the new chair, uh, Commissioner Keller. Okay. So, Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, Thank you. Then it will be time for me to thank you very much for um, having a situation where I could help the city of Emeryville for the period of time that I did. Uh, I'll pass the gavel over to Stephen Keller. Thank you, Vice Chair Young. Appreciate it and appreciate your service. Um, so we'll move the meeting on to the public comment. And Charlie, I don't have the script, so could you read the public comment script for us, please? Uh, certainly. Thank you, Chair Keller. Now is the time for the public comment portion of this meeting. Anyone who wishes to make comments related to items not on the agenda should have begun submittal of your online speaker card by now. Three minutes will be allowed. Uh, for the city clerk, or in this case, the planning commission secretary, to read your comments into the record. If you are participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature visible on your screen, or if you're calling in, press star nine, and the secretary will call on you at the appropriate time. At this time, I will ask myself whether any comments have been received via the online comment card, or whether anyone has raised their hands to make audio comments. If you'll bear with me for a quick second, I will check my email. And I do not see any online comment cards. I also do not see any raised hands among the attendees. Give it uh, maybe one more minute or so. Still no comment cards. No raised hands. Okay, so, seeing that's okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. So, we'd like to approve the action minutes of first of all, the special meeting of June 17, 2021. Are there any corrections, or can I have a motion to accept? If there are no Corrections as I need a commissioner to make a motion and a second on those. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. All right. Moved by Commissioner Mendez, seconded, excuse me, Vice Chair Mendez, seconded by <laughs> Commissioner Chafe. Um, oh, I have to reorder this. Let's see. Okay, Commissioner Chafe. Aye. Commissioner Simons. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Zepko is absent. Vice Chair Mendez. Aye. And Chair Keller. Aye. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on to 5.2, the approval of the minutes of our regular meeting of June 24th. Can I have corrections or a motion, please? I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll well, second it, I guess. No. All right, moved by Commissioner Chafe and seconded by Chair Keller on approval of the regular meeting minutes of June 24th, 2021. Um, Commissioner Chafe? Aye. Commissioner Simons? Aye. Um, Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Zipko is absent. Vice Chair Mendez? Aye. And Chair Keller? Aye. Uh, six eyes, the entire, sorry, five eyes, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to the Community Development Director's report. Uh, Mr. Byrne, if we could have a report, please. Thank you, uh, Chair Keller. Uh, the City Council has held two meetings since your last meeting, and those were on July 6th and July 20th. 
On July 6th, they held a study session on the proposal to demolish two residential units and replace them with two new units at 1270 64th Street, and they had a number of comments. Uh, the Planning Commission, as you may recall, previously held a study session on this project at your May 27th meeting, and the project is tentatively scheduled to come back to the Commission for a public hearing on September 23rd. The Council approved the first reading of an ordinance amending the planning regulations to prohibit crematories in Emeryville. As the Commission will recall, you recommended approval of this amendment at your May 27th meeting. Second reading of the ordinance was passed on July 20th, and it will take effect on August 19th. Um, and then concerning the Art Center, when the planning director's report was given uh, of action taken by the Planning Commission at your June 24th meeting, it was reported that the Commission had unanimously denied the proposed modifications to the Art Center project. The Council then voted to appeal this decision to themselves, and this appeal will be considered by the City Council in the coming months. On July 20th, uh, the Council considered planning commission appointments. They interviewed candidates for the two openings on the commission, and uh, they appointed Al Dram and Jack Kizoni to three-year terms. These, uh, their appointments are effective on August 1st, so their first planning commission meeting will be on August 26th, at which time they will be sworn in by the city clerk. The council held a study session on Wareham's proposal to earn development bonus points for the Emory Station Overland project via the flexible community benefit by converting some of the live work units in the adjacent Hollis Street building into below market rate or BMR unit. As the commission knows, if this proposal is accepted by the council, then the entire project will require city council approval. But if it is not, then the project approval will be considered by the planning commission and would be appealable to the council. The council had a lengthy and detailed discussion about the various factors involved in converting these units into BMRs, but they did not reach a final conclusion about whether or not to agree to entertain Wareham's proposal. Therefore, a second city council study session on a more detailed proposal that will be developed in the interim will be scheduled in the future. Uh, the council amended its calendar of regular meetings to eliminate the August 31st and September 21st meetings and to add a new meeting on Monday, September 13th, starting at 5.30 p.m. Since the council normally does not meet in August, this means that the next regular council meeting will be on September 13th, uh, followed by one on October 5th. Uh, the council passed the first reading of a so-called REACH Code ordinance, amending the building regulations to require new residential buildings to be all electric and to install solar panels in the so-called solar zone of the roof of buildings up to 10 stories. This ordinance is scheduled to come back to the council for second reading on September 13th. And uh, finally, the council heard a presentation and approved the conceptual design of the proposed level four and level five traffic calming measures related to the Sherwin-Williams project on Horton 45th and 53rd streets. And finally, I just would like to take this opportunity to express staff's appreciation to Commissioner Young for his years of service on the Planning Commission and to say that he will be missed. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to respond to any questions. Thank you, Dr. Bryant. Are there any questions uh, from the Commission to Dr. Bryant on the report? Commissioner Chin? Just one question about the REACH code. So did you say that was for residential only? Well, yes, the REACH codes have been being considered by the Sustainable Com Sustainability Committee, and then uh, their recommendations are being passed along to the council, and they have divided it up into a number of different uh, items. So there's, there's kind of a package of things that constitute the REACH codes. This particular ordinance to require 100% uh, electric on all um, residential buildings is part of part of the package of proposals, but it's only one of them. It's not all of them. Thank you. Any other questions? So Charlie, on that REACH code, is are they considering the, the, um, the fact that we're getting so many requests for uh, lab buildings and the amount of energy they use and basically the need for natural gas in those buildings, or is, has there been any discussion on that? I believe there has, and that that's a separate ordinance that would be coming forward in the future. 
that I don't believe that one has been finalized yet, and I, I'm, uh, I believe that the concerns of the uh, lab building owners and operators and tenants have are being taken into consideration. Okay, okay very good. Thank you. Uh, if there's no more questions, we'll move on to item seven. And that will be the disclosure of ex parte communication and in identification of conflicts of interest. So, have there been any ex parte communications from Mr. Mendez? Commissioner Mendez? Um, I did receive an email from the developer and the Longfellow. Um, however, I did not uh, engage in the meeting with him um, because I also have a conflict of interest. Which is, should I, should I state my conflict of interest now? Well, since it's the very next item on the agenda, I think it probably would be all right. What do you think, uh, Christine? I'd be okay with that. Christine, okay with that? Sure. Okay, so um, Longfellow developers, they are a client of my employer. Therefore, they're a source of income to me. And um, I will have to be recusing myself from item um, 8.1. Thank you. And uh, Christine, can I also ask if we received an email and an invitation to discuss any with the developer, but we did not meet with them? Is there a necessary, is it necessary to uh, disclose an ex parte communication if we didn't actually meet with them? If you didn't communicate, it's it's not necessary to disclose. Although, um, you know, a lot of public officials like to indicate that they did receive a communication, okay. and uh, so I believe that's what you know Commissioner Mendez has done here. But um, if 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 you did not do any communicating on your end, then no, technically you do not have to disclose uh, any communication. Okay, I think I think it's good just to be clear. So I did get an email from the developer. I emailed them back that I did not need to meet with them. So I haven't had any other communication with them. Commissioner Chief. Same situation for me. I received an email from the developer and I let them know I was not available to meet before the meeting today. Commissioner Sunday. 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 Sunday email as well. Um, I received an email and I did not reply. Okay, very good. I think that's everybody. <laughs> uh, I believe uh, Commissioner Young had something. He said he did. Oh, okay. I did. I, okay, I just pretty much uh, I received an email from him as well, and I didn't respond either. Alrighty, very good. So, any um, com any other uh, conflicts of interest for anyone? Alrighty then. So we can move on to the study session item eight point one, the age from Longfellow mixed use. And Charlie, am I correct that um, Maru will be doing a presentation or kicking us off? Uh, yes, uh, first I would like to say, I guess Commissioner Mendez will, uh, Vice Chair Mendez will need to leave the meeting at this point. If you like, uh, Vice Chair Mendez, I can text you when this item is over so you can return for the Commissioner comments at the end. Yep, that's fine. All right, Thank you. I will do that. Thank you. Okay, Maru, I think the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair uh, Keller, and uh, good evening, Planning Commission. I will be sharing my screen here in a minute. And, and are you able to see my screen? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a study session on a proposed planned unit development, preliminary development plan at 1650-65th Street. Uh, just to get you located, uh, it is in the north, uh, north end of our town, uh, west side uh, of railway road, uh, railroad and east of I-80. Uh, the site is an uh, uh, amalgamation of two sites. One is what we call the atrium site, and the other are two parcels which are occupied by SAE Expressions College. Uh, just to the north of the site, uh, we have the NADI, what is called the NADI project, uh, which is currently under construction. And to the south, uh, there is a Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater apartments here, and uh, you have Bay Center uh, office buildings right, to the south. The parcel, uh, collected parcel, is about 7.268 acres. This table kind of shows you individual parcels occupied by the Expressions College, which together are about 
uh, under two acres, and the atrium building parcel is about uh, five acres. So this is the proposed site plan. Uh, just to get you or oriented, on your right side is Shell Mound Street. At the bottom of your screen is 65th Street. And uh, at the corner here is the public storage building, which is not part of uh, the project site. So what they are proposing are two, three towers, two are lab office buildings, uh, one is these two, and they're both on a parking podium, and then there is a residential building also on a parking podium of fronting 65th Street. In addition, uh, there is a, about a one acre parcel, a one acre uh, public park uh, that you can see right here. So this kind of gives you a little bit more details in terms of how big these buildings are and how tall these buildings are. So the office lab building to the north uh, is 203 feet, uh, and the office building to the south is 223 feet, and they uh, together accommodate around roughly under 750,000 uh, square feet of uh, lab space. The residential tower uh, accommodates 144 units, and is 185 feet. This is the circulation plan that they're proposing. Uh, so you can see that uh, the primary entrance of the residential building is off uh, 65th Street, uh, as well as the entrance of uh, the R&D building uh, south also occurs here. Uh, the building to the north uh, gets its primary entrance facing Shell Mount Street. Uh, the blue lines indicate vehicular uh, circulation and, uh, and where the parking, will, parking garage will be accessed. Uh, the applicant is also proposing some unspecified amount of ground floor retail space in the residential building as well. This kind of gives you the perspective uh, from the northwest of the three buildings. As you can see, uh, the residential building is over two levels of parking, whereas the two lab buildings are over five levels of parking. Uh, and this is the elevation uh, uh, perspective looking to the southeast. Uh, your packet has a number of other massing uh, studies, and these are going to be shown by the applicant in their presentation. So in order to save time, I will not uh, walk you through those massing studies. Uh, in terms of the open space that they're providing, like I mentioned, there is a public park, uh, which is a little over an acre, as well as a, a bicycle pedestrian path along the western perimeter uh, of the site, and that is about 26,000 square feet. In addition, uh, the residential building has open space on its rooftop, a little under 3,000 square feet, and they also have uh, about 8,000 square feet of open space uh, on the podium of the residential building. Uh, for the employees, uh, the, the, main, uh, the major open space is provided on the podium, and that's about 52,000 square feet. So in terms of conformity to the journal plan, uh, the journal plan land use diagram uh, classifies the site uh, as a mixed use with residential where one or more of a variety of residential and non-residential uses are allowed, including offices, retail, and hotels, as well as uh, research and development. On larger sites, a mix of residential and non-residential uses is required, and larger site would include this site. The project is consistent by proposing office R&D as well as residential use. In addition, the general plan land use diagram also designates this location as an other park opportunity site. And this is implemented through the parks and recreation strategic plan, which calls for one half uh, public acre uh, public park at this location. What they're proposing is a 1.18 uh, acre public park, as well as uh, a bicycle and pedestrian path along the Western perimeter, which is uh, calculates to about a little over half an acre. In terms of the planning regulations, uh, the base zone is MUR, mixed use with residential, which also allows a variety of uses, such as office, R&D, as well as multifamily residential uses. On the sites of five acres or more, the MUR district requires a mix of uses, one of which must be residential. The exact mix is not specified in our regulations and is to be determined by the Planning Commission and the City Council uh, through the entitlement process. 
Uh, what they're proposing is an office and R&D building, uh, which as, as I mentioned is a little under 750,000 square feet and 144 residential units as major uses. Uh, well, in terms of the planned unit development process, on site greater than five acres, such as this one, any development proposal must be approved through a PUT procedure. And this is a two-step process uh, consisting of a review of preliminary development plan, uh, followed by one or more final development plans. Uh, as some of you uh, have, might have known that in the Sherwin Williams, that was also a PUD PDP process, and they uh, processed the new four new buildings under one FTP. Whereas in the marketplace PUD, uh, there were several uh, FTPs for each individual building. So this really depends on the developer in terms of how they want to uh, submit for their final development plans after uh, their PUD and the PDP plan is approved. Uh, there are specific findings that to be made uh, for the PD, PDP approval as well as for the FTP approval and these findings have been outlined in the staff report and the, I'm not going to go through these uh, PUD findings uh, but just simply say that uh, what you, the findings uh, speak to consistency with the general plan uh, that the development proposal is a cohesive integrated well developed well planned development that it is compatible with the neighborhood, uh, that it includes uh, adequate open space, parking, pedestrian walks, uh, signs, and landscaping. Uh, regarding conformity with the planning regulations, uh, residential density. So uh, this, what is allowed is uh, 70 units per acre by right, which can be increased to 135 units per acre with bonus points. So this calculates for the site as 509 units as base and up to 981 units uh, with a bonus. What they're proposing is 144 units, which calculates uh, to 20 units per acre. So it is well within uh, the base, uh, the allowed base residential density. Uh, FAR, uh, 3.0 is allowed by right, which can be increased to six uh, with a bonus. Uh, what they are proposing is 3.044, which is rounded to three. And so the FAR is also within uh, the base uh, FAR that is permitted. Height, uh, what is allowed by base is 75 feet, and it can be increased to uh, over 100 feet, which basically means unlimited height is allowed by uh, with bonus points. All three buildings are above 100 feet. Uh, just to recall, 185 feet for the residential tower, 203 and 223 uh, feet for the two resident, uh, non-residential buildings. So the project uh, will require 100 bonus points for height. So in terms of bonus points, 50 points, the applicant will obtain, 50, are required to obtain the 50 points by providing 17% of the units to be affordable. So this calculates to 24 units. Uh, the regulations also further specify at what levels of affordability that they're required to provide. And these are six units at very low, eight at low, and 10 at moderate income. In addition, because they're also proposing a non-residential uh, development, the applicant will pay increased, and in this case, double the affordable housing impact fee for non-residential component of the project. The current fee for R&D is a little under $5, uh, so what would apply here is a little under $10. So that equates to uh, roughly $7.2 million uh, if a building permit was issued today. So basically these fees are due at the building permit and at that time, whatever uh, our, uh, our, our fees are, uh, that would be what would be relevant. But, but at, today's, uh, at, at today's dollars, if they were to apply for a building permit, they would need to pay $7.2 million as affordable housing impact fee for the non-residential component. The remaining 50 points, the applicant needs to obtain by providing community benefits. These have not yet been identified by the applicant at this time. Parking, 
uh, in, for commercial uh, parking, what is permitted is uh, no parking, which can be in, uh, increased to 1,602 spaces. They are proposing uh, 1,497 spaces uh, for their commercial components. So it is within what is permitted uh, by our code. For the residential parking, what is permitted is zero to 190 spaces, which includes guest parking as well. And what they are proposing is 144 spaces, which is basically one uh, space for each unit. Uh, no residential guest parking has been assigned at this time. Uh, there's also bicycle parking involved. Uh, what will be required for commercial is 146 long term and 146 short term. And for the residential, uh, they need to provide 144 long term and 14 short term bicycle spaces. These have not yet been identified uh, in the proposal. In terms of open space requirements, uh, for the commercial uses, what they are required to provide is uh, it's a little under 38,000 square feet, which includes a minimum of a little under 7,500 square feet of purpose. What they're proposing is a little over 52,000 square feet of common open space. And at this time, it is not clear whether any portion will be designated as pupils. For the residential component, uh, they are required to provide a little under 6,000 square feet of private open space and a little under 3,000 square feet of common open space. Uh, they are proposing uh, 11,000 square feet of common open space on the parking podium. Uh, the private open space has not yet been identified at this stage. Uh, the, the proposal was reviewed by, uh, by staff at the June 9th uh, DCC meeting. Uh, some of the suggestions include a consolidation of drivers along Shenmount Street. Right now they're proposing two drivers along Shenmount Street. Uh, it was suggested that no loading information is provided at this stage and this will be necessary as the project moves forward. Uh, there was also a suggestion of switching the location of the park with the residential tower so that the tower could take advantage of the views while providing some protection from wind and noise for the park users. Uh, it was noted that while a phasing plan had not yet been submitted, it was suggested that the residential building should be constructed before the commercial buildings. Uh, given the large monetary outlay that would be triggered by this development for public art, uh, it was suggested that the applicant start thinking about it at this very early stage of the proposal. So in terms of the discussion items the, and in terms of the feedback that the staff and the applicant would like to receive, one is regarding mix of users. Does the commission feel that the proposed mix of users is appropriate for this site? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, that you are, uh, this site requires a mix of users, of which one needs to be residential, and others could be a variety of office, life science, R&D, retail, hotel users. So the question for the commission is that whether the proposed mix is appropriate for the site. Site planning. Uh, does the commission think that the location of the public park and the three towers and the proposed circulation is appropriate for the site? Uh, I, it is still very early, but if the Commission has any preferences in terms of how bonus points for community benefits should be obtained, uh, the applicant and staff would be uh, would like to hear that. And if the, the Commission has any other comments on the overall project design. And findings, does the Commission feel that the required findings for the PUD can be made? And I can put that up uh, if necessary as when the commission decides to collaborate. So that uh, concludes my presentation. And uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the applicant does have a presentation uh, and staff requests that the planning commission provide comment on the issues noted above. And uh, I would be happy to answer any questions at this time. Very good, thank you, Maru, appreciate it. Does the commission have any questions regarding the project to staff? <clears throat> Commissioner Chief has her hand up. Let's let her go first. Thank you. Um, quick question on the open space. Maru, could you go back to the slide that talks about open space designations?
sorry. Can you still see this? It's yeah, that's yeah. that's fine. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to check. So this, um, so for commercial uses, it's required um, to have thirty-seven thousand square feet, of which seven thousand are popos. And right now, so my question was the fifty-two thousand three hundred and sixty square feet of common open space that does not include the proposed park, correct? Correct. Correct. So the proposed park is the public park. Okay. Great, and um, and so right now most of this common open space is on top of the parking podiums. All of it is on top of the parking podium. And is that the same? I can look back and check this, but if you know offhand, is that the same for the um, eleven thousand one hundred and fifty square feet of common open space for residential use? Is that also all on the podium? That is correct. Okay. That is also on. Uh, I'm sorry. That is on the podium as well. There is a smaller roof deck uh, as well. Okay, great. Thank you. But um, just to be clear, the common open space on the podium for the residential is different than the common open space on the podium for the commercial. Is that correct? Yes. So they're separate podiums. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Simons, do you have a question? Um, no, I don't. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Keller. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. And at this time, we'll bring up the developer for present their presentation. All right, if you'll bear with me for a moment, I have five people to elevate to the, to the uh, panelist level. Uh, just have to do that for each of them. Let's see. Stress, Charlie. This is the only thing we have on the agenda tonight. <laughs> You're not going to keep us too late. I hope not. <laughs> okay, two to go. Let's see, where are they? Um, I have to. Viru sent me an email that has them all listed, and that's hard for me to. Yeah, well, Peter um, Fritz. Peter Fritz. Charlie. Right, thank you. And who's missing? email keeps disappearing. Where is it? I think that's it, Charlie. I had one other. Brian Janstick, did I get you? Yes, he's there. Rob Williamson, Liz Bridges, Peter Fritz, and Evan Schwimmer. I think we're all here. Um, oh. My, uh, Charlie, could you, um, it, it's only elevated me for audio. <laughs> that's okay. You don't need to see oh. me if oh. you'd like to. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. I'm not sure why that would be the case. Actually, it doesn't show you on the panel. So hang on a minute. Let me see if I can fix that. I'm sure the commissioners are more interested in our content than what I look like, but <laughs> no, no problem. <problems. laughs> Oh, there you are. There you are. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. You are way at the top. So you're hiding. You should be uh, able to be seen now. There you go. Thank you. All right. We're all set. Up. Gentlemen, take a look at your leisure, ladies and gentlemen. You can, uh, whoever's presenting can, there you go, share your screen. started here while this is going uh, full screen uh, but first off I'd like to thank Maru for an excellent presentation uh, and also uh, I wish uh, the, the commissioners a good evening thank you for your time uh, tonight uh, we're here to present our concept for what could be at 1650 65th Street and adjoining uh, adjoining parcels uh, just to uh, kick things off with some introductions um, my name is Evan Schwimmer managing director for Longfellow real estate partners with oversight 
of our presence in the Bay Area. Uh, and I'd like to introduce my colleague, Peter Fritz, who oversees our design, construction, and development team on the West Coast. Um, also uh, pictured here, uh, but uh, not on the panel with us tonight, unfortunately, is Jennifer Kane, uh, my colleague here who oversees our asset management resources in the Bay Area, who I'm pleased to say has been a contributing member of the Amaryville community for, for some time. Uh, I'd also like to introduce the leaders of our design team at HOK, including Brian Yenchik, Senior Principal and Global Director of Planning, uh, as well as Rob Williamson, Principal and Re Regional Leader of HOK's Science and Technology Practice. Uh, before we get into the rest of our, our presentation here, just to do a, a, a quick agenda, um, if we can just back up one slide. Uh, Peter and I will give you um, a little bit of background about Longfellow, which you just think you just got a preview of a moment ago, uh, and who we are. Uh, HOK will walk you through our proposal, uh, and then we uh, look forward uh, to the, the Q&A and discussion following our presentation. Um, you know, we've put a lot of time and thought into this, but we've deliberately left a, 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 cer a certain few items open for uh, input from this commission and the community, and look forward to, to digging in with those, with, with, uh, into those with you all today. Uh, so moving on to the next slide here, thank you. Uh, our our Longfellow, um, Longfellow's mission here is to create spaces for new ideas at the end of the day. And we do that within the context of existing spaces, uh, as well as from the context of uh, ground-up developments. Longfellow is the largest privately owned life science owner and operator in the U.S. And we are, as you can see here, we are in the top five life sciences and innovation markets across the United States with a robust team and portfolio that really enables us to think creatively, expansively, and for the long term. Uh, if we move to the next slide. Within the Bay Area, we have presence in five of the top, top life sciences and innovation communities in the region, including Palo Alto, Redwood City, San Mateo, San Francisco, and most recently in Emeryville. We've been trying to break into Emeryville for some time, uh, and we're pleased to finally establish a presence that we hope to grow over the long term, uh, regardless of the outcome of this particular uh, proposal. Uh, our, our existing portfolio of roughly 2.4 million square feet is something that we hope to, to grow and, uh, and, and really establish ourselves uh, in, in the Emeryville community. Uh, next slide. Uh, Longfellow is a vertically integrated developer and operator of life sciences facilities, working in collaboration uh, with cities, communities, and public and private institutions. Uh, we have the in-house resources and expertise to deliver this project and others across our portfolio from start to finish. Uh, and we have extensive experience working with communities to deliver projects that are well suited to the local market and to the local context in which they're delivered. So, uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Peter Fritz, who will walk you through an illustration of what we do, uh, followed by a handoff to HOK. Peter, over to you. Thank you, Evan. And as Evan intro, my name is Peter Fritz. I'm the Director of Development for Long Fall on the West Coast. And we wanted to quickly showcase one particular project of ours that's in Durham, North Carolina, and that is the Durham ID, or Durham Innovation District. It's located in an urban core, which has very strong industrial roots. And the mix of uses promotes a dynamic live, work, play environment, weaving together the historical context of the neighborhood with innovative research and development, along with residential, retail, and public spaces. And the reason we quickly show you this tonight is because we see a lot of parallels with this very successful project with our properties here in Emeryville. And we're really excited to bring our lessons and our experiences from that project uh, to our project here tonight. Um, and to get into the specifics of this project, I will hand it over to Brian with HOK. Hey, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Commissioners. We'd like to take you on a quick walk through the project. Rob Williamson will join me here in a moment to talk, share with you more about the buildings themselves. As a planner, I'm going to start at the broadest scale. Um, you know, Charlie Maru, the entire team has been incredibly informative, helping us really make sure that our project is rooted within this community. We spent a lot of time, of course, digesting the general plan, the um, Western Emeryville planning, really focused on how do we make sure that our project reinforces the goal of a really cohesive set of uses. We took a lot of time to think about compatibility, um, having a mix of uses like the Durham ID example that Peter just referenced. Um, you know, this, this is, Longfellow is a great partner for the city. They know what it takes to deliver these kinds of mixed uses. 
And then what's else is interesting for the commissioners, and I think fascinating for all of us, is when you look at this project and the scale, we're a gateway project. We're the bookend on the waterfront to the northwest corner. We know the importance of that. That's very clearly stated in the city's documents. And there's also the potential future bridge and connection to the Bay Trail that allows us to connect our community up and down our entire bayfront. So those are the little green um, areas there. We think that open space is gonna play a really critical role in our project. And you know, as Commissioners Chafe and Keller have already asked about, open space um, comes in many different forms on our project. And I'll walk you through that. So cohesion is really important. Next is connectivity. You know, we are blessed here in Emeryville and certainly, you know, at our site, we've got connections to, you know, in Pink, we've got AC Transit stops. We've of course got the Emory Go Round that connects us to BART, Amtrak, I don't need to tell you that Emeryville's invested in transportation as well as bike and ped lanes. And so our project can benefit from that, but more than just benefit, how do we reinforce? You'll see the positioning of our buildings in open space are really purposefully and intentionally um, set to ensure that as people are waiting to get on AC Transit or Emory Go Round, they're sitting in a park in a shade structure, sheltered from the wind, under a tree. And we'll walk you more through that, but um, we're gonna definitely embrace the diversity of transportation modes and reinforce them wherever we can. We spent a lot of time walking around the site. Um, it's an incredible property. I don't need to tell you about the views. We've actually you know, taken some photography at higher altitudes to really showcase that for the commissioners here later. Um, we've got some existing trees along the streetscape. We wanna make sure we take advantage of every opportunity. We also are very mindful that we have residents that are to our south and southeast. And we spent a lot of time thinking about how to be good neighbors, how to provide compatibility. And we'll provide more visuals to help everyone understand exactly what we mean by that and how we'll achieve it. As we now zoom into the site, we've kind of ghosted out the site just to kind of go one, one layer at a time. We start with the connections of the streets. Uh, we are incredibly again, blessed to be on 65th, which of course is our transit street. It's our green street. We're at the terminus for the bookend of Christie Avenue, which is just barely shown at the bottom of the plan there that connects us down to Powell and further. And then of course along Shell Mound where we have our bike connections and pedestrian connections, as well as access up to the Ashby Interchange. These connections really tell us a lot about where our driveway should be, where our front doors should be, and how we can reinforce the city's green streets program and the ped bike route. Ped, ped bike route, it's a tongue twister. The next goal, which we're gonna linger on just for a moment here, is how do we enhance the open space network throughout Emeryville? We think that our project as a gateway project is really gonna critically, uh, it's gonna be critically important to the open space strategy for Emeryville and certainly for our project. I want to walk the commissioners through a couple of the statistics. I, I think that um, Maria already covered a lot of this, but the public park you can see in the kind of lightest green color there at the corner. We chose this position um, because this ensures that it will be in the sun throughout the entire day. It's important to be sheltered from the wind, which the Ashby you know, ramp and the soil there, it's actually higher than our site, um, provides us wind shelter. This also ensures that we're in the sun I don't know about you, but in the afternoons in Emeryville, the best chance of being warm is to be sheltered from the wind and in full sun. So this is how we achieve that with the public park. We also think that the open space in that position is a, it's a stepping stone. It's a gateway to the future pedestrian bridge. You can kind of see in yellow there, up and over and eventually to the Bay Trail. I mean, imagine it's like this sort of landing mat for everyone going to and from the waterfront. We think that's projects like ours can really help reinforce these city goals. The Greenway along um, the Ashby exit of course, as part of the city's bigger vision to connect sites like ours with a bike a shared use path all the way up there to the north to Ashby. We're definitely delivering on that. So too did the project to our north. And then I'd like to walk through the numbers a little bit because the open space plays a really critical role, not just for our community and for our project, but also <laughs> for the bonus. And so the public park that you're seeing there is 51,400 square feet. So it's a little over an acre and, and, a, and a quarter. That is nearly um, 30,000 square feet beyond the requirement. Um, I think as the commissioners know, the Parks and Rec um, strategic plan called for a half acre um, uh, park at this location. It's commonly referred to as Site B. We'll work on the naming. Um, so we're far exceeding that. And this really is the foundation for our community benefits. This is how we're achieving those, those bonus points associated with community benefits. Um, the public um, uh, open space um, in total, um, we, our requirement is about 15% of our site area and we're at about 25% of our site area. So. Um, I don't mean to rattle off so many statistics. We can go through it more during Q&A. But long story short, our public park and our public open space requirements far exceed the city's goals. And, um, and it's going to really benefit the project and the community as well. 
On the next slide, these open spaces um, really anchor then our entrances to the project. Of course, you know, at Christie Avenue, you can the commissioners can see that driveway connection. The public park there then to the southwest corner in the sun allows you to get that gateway moment up and over the interstates. It's that threshold. This also positions residential adjacent to it. But when you look down Christie, you're not just staring into a building. You're actually looking into an open space. We think it's important that there's really an amazing experience at the end of Christie Avenue. This then places the residential onto a public park. We think that's really critical for mixed use. In our experience, we found that that's really important to ensure the residents have quality open space. And then the lab buildings and my partner Rob Williamson will walk through here in a moment and then take up the, um, the remainder of the site to the north. All right, over to you, Rob. Thanks, Brian, great intro. So uh, just to walk you through some of the physical structures on the site and how we've assembled them here for the most optimal configuration. Really what we have in mind here is that live work play environment that's gonna be critical to really activating this Northwest corner of Emeryville. So I'll start with the residential tower. What we've identified here is two, uh, two uh, floors of podium parking. And that provides a parking space per residential unit, 144 units. Miru touched on the uh, low income units that will be provided as part of that project. The tower is a significant, uh, in our minds, portion of the site at 25%. And to the north, we have the laboratory building that's gonna anchor uh, the commercial portion. So that's five stories of podium parking there. That provides us with enough parking to meet the market demand and then above that, the uh, high-rise laboratory buildings. And we've designed these using a configuration that we know is optimized for life science research. It's approximately 110 foot by 300 foot bar. And what we're showing here in this uh, proposal is an eight-story uh, building to the north uh, with a nine-story building to the south that's above the podium level. These buildings will touch the ground to provide entrance and activation at that plaza level and really connect them down to the public space at the lower portion as well as to the podium space above. And then they have the use of the podium space with great views uh, to the west and to the east. Also connecting the uh, two bar buildings is a bridge connector which also acts as a windscreen. So it gives us a little bit more utility at the east side of the podium to where uh, you know if the late afternoon wind is blowing in from the west through the Golden Gate we have an opportunity to create some nice outdoor space still for the occupants, uh, despite the outdoor conditions. So as Brian referred to earlier, circulation we knew is a key driver for how the site was configured. We took into account the entrances off of Shell Mound and Christie as they connect or cross over some of the bike and greenways. We did try to minimize the um, impact of those. One of the considerations here with the laboratory building, there's a certain level of service and uh, loading that's required. And what we've done here is used the podium level to recess a service and loading yard within the podium to where we can get the uh, trucks off of the street coming in off the shell mount, get them turned around into the loading area so they're not queuing, they're not impacting any of the traffic flow. And it minimizes the crossover impact with the bike and greenway. We've also created this interior uh, circulation path that allows vehicles to get around the site and uh, come out to the Christie Avenue, not enter off of Christie Avenue, just to minimize that impact again, seeing that 65th with its new bikeway is really gonna be a primary connector for that pedestrian and vehicle traffic, especially as they come over the new Ped Bike Bridge. We've provided a, a fire lane around the entire building for access. And that is part of why we need that Northern uh, service yard and entrance. So we do have two curb cuts coming off of Shell Mound. We need to maintain that full perimeter access for that fire lane. And then at the park, you can see what we do want to do is activate the street with some of these public uh, amenities. So we're we're showing a little kiosk down in the park uh, that could be a mixed use, you know, a food vendor or some sort of a pop-up shop, as well as providing the opportunity for some ground level retail or other uh, mixed use at the ground level of the residential tower. We did a study just to make sure that we've got all of the uh, truck turning radius figured out in order to get into that location that we've identified for the service yard. We know that's important. As you can see here, we've provided ample space for the truck to come in off the street without impacting and having to stop and turn around on Shell Mound. Uh, we think that'll be a benefit. And this road will serve a dual purpose of also bringing pedestrians between Shell Mound and Christie and connecting them through the site so they're not circumnavigating around the public storage building. 
here we give you uh, an overview of what the site looks like. And you saw this in Mira's slides, so thank you for sharing those. Um, what we're providing here is really a massing concept. So these buildings are stacked, uh, again, optimized to life science research. We have 16 foot floor to floor height on the laboratory building, which we know from experience is critical to achieving our mechanical infrastructure requirements. Uh, we have a 10 foot floor to floor at the residential building, which provides us enough height there to uh, stay below the top of the lab building, which we know is a uh, best practice in design. So we'll uh, continue that. Now what we're showing is also just a massing concept. We don't have any kind of a skin uh, preconception. We wanna work with the council here, uh, with the commission I mean to determine that. And we are open to input and guidance. Looking here from the uh, west side of the project, looking back toward the southeast, you can see the prominent role that that park and that greenway play in connecting the site to the rest of the infrastructure. Now another really critical part of this is we got to put it in the context of the city. So one of the design guidelines really identifies the need for an imageable and memorable city, which Emeryville is uh, by, no, uh, by no, no stretch of imagination. This site as a gateway site that Brian was referring to really offers the opportunity to create a development that anchors the other end of Emeryville to really bookend it. So you'll see here how this uh, development would sit, fit, sit within the, uh, the skyline uh, quite nicely in our mind. And to compare it to some of the other buildings around, we, uh, we did a, a height study here. You'll see our buildings on the left, the two laboratory buildings identified in green and the residential tower identified in yellow. Now those are compared with the Pacific Park Plaza, which is the next one in purple, a uh, significantly taller structure. We've identified the uh, proposed public market parcel B, along with some of the buildings that are on Powell Street, to show you that in the context of Emeryville skyline, this is perfectly fitting um, with what is existing. I'll run you through a number of just concept perspectives as you uh, travel north on I-80. Traveling south on I-80. Exiting at the shuttle mound and Ashby exit. Crossing the pedestrian and bike bridge. Traveling along 65th, traveling east past the development with the residential tower on the right and the laboratory buildings on the left and this massive open space for the public along with that proposed kiosk, some sort of a, a jewel box really sitting within the site. Traveling north on Shell Mound, and you start to see the future Navy development beyond. And then coming from the other direction off of the exit, here's the proposed Navy development in front of our laboratory buildings with the uh, downtown Emeryville in the, in the uh, background. So, Rob just. <laughs> Perfectly timed. <laughs> My poodle. Um, so, Rob just walked you around our project, which. My dog uh, seems to have gotten quite excited about. I wanted to um, bring us back around here and talk about material materiality and craft just just a little bit before we before we wrap up. Um, so Emeryville has a rich history of you know depth, materiality. I mean these are materials, masonry, brick, the industrial heritage. These are honest natural materials, and we think that there's a lot here that we can work with and incorporate into our project to make sure that we're integrated with the neighborhood. We also think that, and we'd love to hear the commissioner's thoughts on um, how we can incorporate public art into our project. Being a science and tech kind of a building, there's so many ways in which we can um, interpret and display and talk about the kinds of innovation, convergence, and ideation that's happening within these buildings for a mixed-use project. So we think public art materiality is a big part of our story. On the next slide. We also think, you know, it, we, we need to think about both the future and make sure that we're, you know, we're couched here in Emeryville's materiality and the rich history, you know, in the past. And we think that there's many ways to do that. You know, you see some examples here of actually blending heavier materials, masonry buildings that Emeryville is so known for with higher, you know, technology, lighter materials, high sustainability above that. And we think that there's ways in which we can blend those material families together. And it's not just about the buildings, the landscapes, the coastal landscapes are incredibly important. We think all those parklands that I went on and on about before, that's an opportunity to bring in endemic species, restore our coastline, and take what is today largely a lot of asphalt, it's a very kind of hard kind of a project, and really turn it into a green kind of a project. And then finally, 
one of the last general plan goals was really to focus on vibrancy. And so I kind of want to end on like a vibrant note. How do we make sure that these public, these public open spaces are active throughout the day, night and day, throughout the week? How do we make sure that that little pavilion that you see within the park, the cafe, it's a great place for everyone to wait for AC Transit, the Amory Go Round. How can we roll the topography like the image there on the lower left so that we can shelter the parks from winds? How do we incorporate landscape and trees? And then the upper images simply remind us that on top of those podiums, we also have landscapes there too, for both the residents and the labs. And then finally, <laughs> some cool drone photos. Um, I, I think the commissioners are probably curious about what the views might be from various heights. We've taken a lot of time to think about where to place the towers relative to one another, especially the residential to maximize views and also access to daylight. So first up, you're up way up in the air, about 180 feet uh, the top, near the top of the residential. You're seeing views in all directions, all the way over towards the Golden Gate. But the East Bay Hills are amazing too. These are from the lab buildings, um, similarly from an upper floor. And you can see views in all directions. And again, for the commissioners, we've staggered the buildings so that buildings see past each other and they also um, slow the wind. And then finally, from the top of the podium of the lab, what's nice about being you know, up a little bit, 50 feet, you actually get to see up and over Ashby and you can see out to the water. So that podium landscape is gonna be fantastic. So to recap uh, and to reinforce the sentiment that Evan shared at the beginning is that Longfellow really is thrilled to be part of the Amberville community. And we believe that this particular project is especially exciting because it's really a unique opportunity for several reasons. Uh, one, given the scale, it's a great opportunity to continue to reinforce Emeryville as a leading life science ecosystem. Second, we're, we're able to accomplish some of the city's stated goals um, which is quite, quite exciting, such as the establishment of a gateway at the northern end of the city, as well as to create a public park, and not just any park, but a, a really large park that's tied into the future overpass. Um, and the most importantly in our mind is it allows us to create a unique live work play environment and it's truly a, um, an engaging and innovative district um, that has something for everyone, the house residential, um, it's a place for innovation as well as public and guests. Two programmatic and high level elements we wanted to highlight with the plan, and that's um, the first is the corner parcel, the parcel of corner 65th and Shell Mound, uh, which is currently public storage. Ideally, that, that parcel would be part of our project, and we have engaged with the owner, and we will continue to engage with them and hopefully work through some creative opportunities to work together but currently it's not part of the project. That said, given the scale and the street front that we do have, we feel the project is able to accomplish all the goals that we've outlined here tonight. Um, and second is residential. We, we really wanted to provide a meaningful amount of residential because there is a real need for housing and affordable housing at that in the Bay Area. And second, we wanted to create the critical mass that's necessary to have a truly live work play environment. You need activation in the morning, during the day, in the weekends, evenings, and having to mix the uses of the park, the residential, and retail kiosk, it, it really accomplishes that. Um, and we're accomplishing that through the proposed 144 units. Um, you know, echoing again what, what Evan and, and Brian and Rob shared, we're, we're looking for feedback on the program as well as feedback on the details of the buildings, what these buildings want to look like. We, we want to echo back to the, the historical context of the city, but also be forward looking with um, the research and development that will, that will be done here. So we look forward to your feedback. We want to thank staff for, for your assistance to get here tonight. Um, we want to thank the commission in advance for your feedback and questions. Um, and so with that, Charlie and Miru will hand it back to you. We will hand it back to the chair to facilitate any commissioner questions. Very good. Thank you, guys. That was a really good and thorough presentation. <clears throat> I really appreciate your visuals. Uh, I think it's very helpful to see it in the context of the existing community. Are there any questions from the commission to the developer? I see, I see Commissioner Simon's hand. Go ahead, Mr. Simon. Commissioner Simon. Thank you, Commissioner Keller. Uh, I have a question. Do you have a predicted number of employees who would work at this site? 
Based off the square footage, and again, it depends on which tenant would ultimately occupy here and the type of clients they would have, but given the rules of thumb we typically see would be around 2,000 employees. Thank you. Commissioner Chang. Thank you so much for the presentation, really helpful. Um, could you address the issue of um, POPOS, the privately owned public open space, and whether you've had any thinking about that so far? Yeah, certainly. So um, you know, we need to work with staff um, and the commission on recommendations, whether it's um, POPOS or what the mechanism is, but it's certainly intense that that public park, as well as the, the path going along the western edge of the site, is publicly accessible land. So we're open to suggestions and the city's recommendation on how to formalize that. Thank you. And then one other question. Um, I actually really don't know the answer to this in general about Emeryville, but has there been any exploration of putting parking on underground? I don't think I can think of any other examples in Emeryville where that's been done. So maybe it's just a no, but I'm curious your thoughts on that. We, we very quickly looked at it and very quickly came to the answer is um, there's a very high water, water table okay. being on the bay as well as some environmental factors from previous uses. So underground parking is, is not feasible. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? <clears throat> so I just have one. Um, in the plan I, I saw where you were having your delivery trucks illustrated stuff, have you given any thought to uh, garbage recycling and composting handling on the site? Or is that still to be developed? We have, and we would want to consolidate all service in the same general vicinity. So between loading, unloading, uh, garbage and delivery, we would identify those as one particular use that we'd want to separate out from passenger vehicles and daily travel, and also short-term loading and unloading. If we're talking about Ubers, drop-offs, uh, UPS vehicles, FedEx, that would be a separate uh, use. So there is an intentional split between those two. And then there's also, you guys are looking at those services for the residential towers separate from the commercial? That's correct. Okay. And we, I just would ask that you look at trying to keep that um, in the building as much as possible. We have a lot of dumpsters that sit out on the street. The birds pick through it, the wind blows it away. And so it's really kind of a pet peeve of mine that the garbage containers sit out. And so I'd like you to look as best you can. At, um, but we can get into that in the comments section, but that was my question to you. You are looking at that. You're after okay. our own heart, Steve, Commissioner <laughs> Keller. All okay, right, so if there are no more questions, uh, what I'd like to do is oh, open this to- Excuse me, Chair Keller. I, yeah. believe, I believe Commissioner Young has his hand up. I'm sorry, I missed that. Commissioner Young, go ahead, please. Um, thank you very much. Let me raise the down. Um, I wondered if there was any kind of reflection in terms of how you wanted to have that room, that residential building next to the building, how close next to the lab, how close that might be, what's the distance that it follows. Are you thinking about, it's because about 25% of those units are really going to kind of face out in front of the lab, vice versa. Can, it, can, you, can you talk in those terms of what do you, how do you visualize that? Yeah, I can address that. So the separation here is a minimum of 40 feet. It's actually more separation than you'd get with a downtown high rise residential. So if you imagine yourself being in a downtown environment, you'd be in a residential tower. Your separation from the laboratory building, which could be a downtown use as well, is going to be greater on this site. And that was considered. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Chafe uh, has a question, I believe. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. One more question. So you made reference collectively um, many times about the presentation to the potential bridge over the, the bike head bridge over the freeway. What is your understanding of um, the timeline and probability of that actually being built? And how would um, how would any changes to the proposed design of that bridge influence your thinking about the site design? Um, I, could, question. I, could take, okay. I could take the design side of that. I might defer to the city in terms of timing. Maybe you have better intel than we do from Caltrans and others. Uh, so Commissioner Chief, uh, and thankfully in each one of the scenarios that's being explored for the pedestrian bridge, they all kind of land back somewhere around 65th Street where it meets the waterfront. And so thankfully, as long as, so long as we position open space there to receive 
that future bridge design, which is I think still being developed, um, we're gonna do a good service. So that's, that, that's helpful for us. Uh, as to the timing of that bridge, I'll, I'll maybe defer back to Charlie or Maru. Maybe you know well, better than we do. I can address that briefly. I mean, I don't have a very precise answer to that. I uh, will say this has been uh, in the this has been a proposed project for many years. It is uh, moving fairly rapidly towards completion. Uh, the lead on this project is actually the Alameda County Transportation Commission (ACTC), and uh, there was a city council study session on this project. I believe it was in June, May or June, uh, where they went through it. And uh, what was reported, and the Public Works Department are the ones who are really spearheading it on behalf of the city, so I'm, I'm not really on the inside track on this, but um, uh, I believe what was reported then is that it is entering the environmental review stage now. So they're starting to prepare an environmental document. Most likely that will be both a CEQA and a NEPA document. I'm not sure what kind of document it is, probably an EIR, uh, I don't know. Uh, so, you know, that will take a year or so, and uh, it, it's all uh, involved, of course, with the Caltrans process for getting projects approved and, and then constructed. So, you know, I would best guess, I'd say probably five to ten years, but it is moving forward. Okay, thank you. Last I had heard it was not funded yet, so that was part of the reason for my question. Oh, it's fun. Well. That's not entirely true. It's funded through uh, Measure BB, I believe, but not completely. Uh, apparently, there is a big funding gap. So yes, there is additional funding that needs to be had. Concerning the design issue, I will say every iteration of this, pro or virtually every iteration of this project that I've ever seen, the interchange project, has had the pedestrian bicycle bridge landing at 65th, at the end of 65th Street. So I think it's a pretty good bet that that is most likely where the pet bike bridge will land. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you. Um, so we have no more questions. I will now open it up to public comment. Charlie, if you could read our COVID script for us, I would appreciate that. Certainly. Now is the time for the public comment on this item. Anyone who wishes to make comments related to this item should have begun submittal of your online speaker card by now. Three minutes will be allowed for the uh, Planning Commission Secretary to read your comments into the record. If you are participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature visible on your screen, or if you are calling in, press star nine, and the Secretary will call on you at the appropriate time. At this time, I will ask myself, whether any comments have been received via the online comment card and or whether anyone has raised their hand to make audio comments. So I will recheck my email, which is where the online speaker cards arrive. I do not have any online speaker cards in my email. I also do not see any raised hands among the attendees. Uh, we have 17 attendees tonight. Oh, there's a raised hand. Uh, Nikos Bountas, you will have three minutes. Uh, you may unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, um, I'm a resident from the Bridgewater site and uh, I would like to understand what concept design consideration, consideration has been given from this project in terms of the light shade uh, that it will cause given the height to the Bridgewater community, um, given this is really a four-story building. Um, I can, oh, is well, that for Chair, us? Chair Keller, do you wish to ask the applicant to respond to the public comment? Does the applicant have a response? Are they prepared? Yeah, if you have one, sure, go ahead and give us your information. Give us what information you have. Great. I'll just, I'll just. Sorry about that, Charlie. Um, yes, I'll just add. Um, so, as, as the, as we, we've definitely taken a look at the solar studies, and by placing the residential building um, as far to the right on those plans you just saw, or to the east, um, it helps us um, keep from shading the building as the sun swings pretty far to the north um, throughout the year. And so that we've taken that into account to ensure that um, daylight 
um, continues to meet the residential buildings. Thankfully, our building is to your north, and so um, that helps us a lot and ensure that our building doesn't um, cast shade. So we just have to keep an eye on that far, far northern winter sun to ensure that sun still strikes um, onto your windows. So it's very important to us, and it's something that we're going to continue to study. I would note also that uh, presumably whatever environmental document the city ends up preparing on this project for CEQA analysis will include a shadow study. And I would ask that that be provided even if CEQA doesn't require it. <clears throat> but most plans we do see that, so I kind of think it's expected that as it develops and becomes a, a project, I'm sure we'll see a shadow study. Already, any other raised hands? Um, well, Ms. Bontis has raised her hand again. Uh, she didn't use her full three minutes. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, all right. You need to unmute yourself again. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have another question, which is pertaining to the traffic. Um, there is a train station next to, well, there is a train station, and when the train passes, it's already actually causing a lot of traffic at the intersection of the 65th street. So if we're adding 2000 employees to these labs research center, I guess we're just trying to understand what design consideration would be taken in terms of the additional traffic these workers may bring when they're leaving or going to the work at the same schedule. Chair Keller, I would suggest that if Ms. Bountis has any further questions that she state them all now during her three minutes of time and then they can be responded to afterwards. That would be appropriate. Is this your final question? Yeah, that's it for now. Okay, thank you. Charlie, do you want to take that or? Um, well, I mean, I'll just say that we will do a traffic analysis as part of the uh, environmental review and um, so we will study all of those issues. Yeah, that's what I assumed. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Um, I do not see any other raised hands among the attendees. Let me double check my email again to see if any online speaker cards have been submitted. I do not see any online speaker cards. And I do not see any further raised hands among the attendees. Okay, at this time we will close the public comment period and bring oh, it back to, uh, go ahead. The uh, city attorney has a raised hand though. I just wanted to clarify for the record, Charlie, can you confirm that this speaker submitted a, a written communication to the Planning Commission that was forwarded to them for their review prior to the meeting tonight? Oh, was that the speaker? May I believe been. it was. There was. Um, Miru, do you know that? Uh, no, it was a different name, uh, and it wasn't uh, Miss uh, Buntas. And I can just tell you the name right now. Uh, P. P. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Pedro Yang was a letter that was uh, emailed to us and which was forwarded to the commission. And but also, Ms. Bountis was CC'd on that email, so I'm assuming there's some connection there. Thank you, Star. Okay, so bringing it back to the commission for uh, deliberation, um, why don't we start with Commissioner Young? Um, a great presentation, everyone. Um, for my last uh, commission uh, pointed remarks that I'll make tonight, um, I thought the the layout and plan was quite nice. I, I, I like the fact that there was a pretty juxtaposition. I just like to keep in mind that in terms of how you site plan it, the um, try to maximize the views for as many people as you can on the residential. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of would be a neat way to kind of really take advantage of. We got you got it. It, it just seems like the residential building is a little bit tucked into the corner there, um, but it, 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 if you can just juxtaposition just right here, massaging it out. Um, I really like the fact that in terms of um, a lot of opportunity for public art on how you're going to um, sitescape the, the, the properties. I like the water features that are presented and I think the fact that 
uh, there's a lot of natural curves that could be placed and used there. And I think that leaves a lot of great opportunities for public art. Um, I think the connectivity between the, the buildings make kind of a uh, kind of a play interplay of kind of a campus slash um, almost like a community on its own. And the relationship between the lab buildings and the res residential building could have a really neat opportunity. It's kind of an interesting mix. Um, and in terms of the feel of how an urban core industrial um, tie in, the I think it'd be neat just to kind of carry off as much of the materials throughout the site offer some differentiations, um, bring in something that might be a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit special. Um, don't be afraid to be bold on it. Um, Emeryville is a neat place, has a has a tendency to leave itself for the quirky and the unknown and the, the specialness of it. So don't be afraid to do that here. Um, other than that, I think it's a I think it's a vibrant idea. I'm really um, excited to see a project like this use that site in a kind of a, a kind of a neat positive way, kind of a rare opportunity for uh, this location. Um, same thing with the bridge. Oh, oh, and I guess uh, in terms of that bridge coming across, I mean, a lot of people are going to be using it, so uh, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of excitement there. To try to tie, find a place to tie the the marina side of Emeryville to basically. Um, the rest of them, you know, and I think that's a very positive move. So thank you very much for your presentation, and I think it's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, and if we have questions when you, before we wrap up, we'll come back to you. Uh, Charlie, do you want to demote the public speaker um, before we go on? And while we're doing that, um, Commissioner Chait, would you like to share your comments? That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for the great presentation. Um, it's really exciting to see the plans for this part of Emeryville. And as someone who sits on the Parks and Rec Committee, um, the idea of having such a large new park is, is just thrilling because most of our committee meetings um, is spent. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. OK. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, back to recording. Um, most of our, our committee meetings are spent trying to eke out any tiny bit of park space that we can find around the city. Um, so the possibility of having such a large um, park that's so well connected is amazing. Um, I noted that there are some guidance um, passages about the type of amenities that are desired in the park um, that are in the Parks and Rec strategic Plan, and I think it would be great to reflect that in any future plans that go forward for the park. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this idea from the staff presentation about switching the location of the park and the residential tower, and I do think that there could be some interesting benefits to that. Um, so one is that um, the park right now is really close to the freeway, and people who are using the park don't have any possibility to reduce their exposure to air pollution, especially during traffic jams which happen pretty much daily on that stretch. Um, whereas people who are inside their apartments do have the possibility. Now, obviously, people are you know, going to be spending a lot of time in their apartments, so putting them closer to the traffic might be counterintuitive. But if they have the ability to be comfortable with windows closed and have air purification through HVAC and such, then you know, it may actually make sense to have the, um, the apartments closer to the freeway and the park further away. Um, I do also think that it would be really nice to have the park more visible from 65th and Shell Mound because it's an intersection that gets a lot of, um, of traffic right now, like pedestrian and, and um, bike traffic, and it looks like it's built to be even more in that direction, like we're encouraging more bike and ped traffic there. And so having something that's a bit more visible from that intersection um, could be really inviting and serve um, the surrounding communities even more. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the wind tunnel effects between the buildings. I assume that's something that you all have thought about and um, designed for, um, but I'd just be interested to hear more about that in future, um, future presentations, because especially with a lot of the open space being up a bit, um, you know, just from experience going on the new space that's up a bit near the train bridge, um, the pedestrian bridge over the train tracks, it can get really windy there, and that's just I think it's on the third story officially. Um, and so if you have things that are up even higher than that and really close to the bay, um, wouldn't want to exacerbate it at all with a wind channel effect. Um, let's see. 
be very interested to see the pedestrian circulation plan in the future and the ideas for bike parking. I think in general, um, I my main concern right now is about parking and about the idea that as you pass by this um, proposed development that you'd be basically seeing, I think it's five levels of parking on two of the buildings. Um, and that, first of all, doesn't feel right for a direction for Emeryville to go forward, just having that much parking built into all of the buildings. And um, secondly, it's just not, it's not a very inviting experience. So I think there would be some creative things to do around green walls or public art. But um, I think reducing the parking as much as possible would be a key priority for me. Um, and so I'd be interested to hear any reflections that the development team has on um, potentials for reducing parking. Um, one other question I have actually, and I'm, I don't know if this has been addressed, is the idea of moving parking into a separate structure um, and then somehow consolidating the buildings a little bit. Um, I'm guessing it was a uh, very thoughtful decision to put the parking where it is now, but I'd, I'd be interested to hear more about other alternatives that were considered. I'll stop there. Thanks. Chair. You don't have to stop. We come back to you if you have any more questions. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Simons. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you so much, Chair Keller. Um, thank you so much, city staff, and to the developer for giving really, really complete presentations. Um, I'm very excited to do something with this site. I love that it's <clears throat> right on the bay, and I love that it's one of the most, I think, well developed, just exciting parts of Emeryville. Um, so I guess I'll just run down the list of questions that we got from staff here. Um, you know, I think obviously, so first question, clearly this is the mix of use um, that are laid out in our requirements. I'm a little concerned about the jobs housing imbalance, um, like Commissioner, Commissioner Chafe mentioned. <clears throat> um, it appears to be about 10 to 1 um, jobs to housing. And, you know, I'd much rather have everybody who's working in your nice biotech building get a chance to live in our city. Uh, I think it's a great place to live, and it's important to me that we make this city as accessible um, as possible. Uh, so continuing to throw that more out of whack, um, I'm not too happy about. Um, but obviously, there's many other reasons why this is happening, and it's not only a problem here. Um, I, I, I think around the um, site planning, um, I think balancing getting away from the bay um, with the light is a tricky decision. Uh, I go to the marina with my dog pretty much five nights a week, and it's exhausting to be out there in the wind. Um, I think potentially switching the park location might make it much more um, actually usable and a place people would really want to be. Um, and I also know it would take you away from the noise. And I know that freeway noise is really exhausting um, and not very pleasant to be around. Um, on the bonus points, I don't have any strong feelings about that. So I'd love to hear from other commissioners. Um, I, I, one concern is around the project design is the park next to this giant, the, next to this great wall. Um, I'd love to see some really creative ideas about how uh, we figure out how to make that happen and how to look nice. Um, I know that's a challenge with so many stories of parking, um, which I guess I would prefer to get rid of. Um, but if we can't, I, I'd love to see some really creative art um, to make that happen. Um, and I think those are all of my comments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Simons. Um, I guess because Commissioner Mendez isn't here, I'm the last person. So um, I'd just like to thank you and staff for the work you've done um, as a first run um, of just massing and sizing it, et cetera. I think you guys have really come up with one of the best projects. Um, I'm into my third term as a planning commissioner. I think this is one of the best projects that has come to us at this phase. I am really surprised and elated to, to what you're showing us. And I think if you keep going moving forward on this trajectory, you guys will have a very, very good project. Um, I, I would like us to uh, get a better pitch on all the open space, rooftops, um, podiums, and etc. when you come back. Um, I would like for you guys to provide us with the details uh, of being in accordance with the city design guidelines. 
Um, that's often an aspect that gets missed in these conversations at this phase. So when you come back, you know, kind of clarify all of your um, materials, uh, landscape, hardscape, um, sidewalk widths, kind of give us all the details. I know this is too early, but this is just, uh, now that we've lost a commissioner who was very, very adamant on design guidelines, I'm trying to pick up that mantle from her. Um, I, I, as I often do, I disagree with the DCC and I'm gonna unfortunately have to disagree with a couple of commissioners here. They don't have the luxury of the view that I have of this location. I'm actually sitting here looking at it from 300 feet right now. And the freeway is not as close to this proximity as the freeway is to other areas of town because the freeway shoots by and the off ramp from Ashby and Showman come into that. So the freeway actually moves away from this parcel more so than it does from my property or even the base center property. So I, and it is a berm, there is a berm there. And so I think with the planning that they have, they're gonna drop that um, down so the wind should not be as a problem. The wind is always gonna be a problem in Riverville. Um, every time we walk, do a walk, we walk from San Pablo into here, we walk across the road tracks, the wind increases exponentially. So we're going to have to live with wind. The thing I like is I, I have opening windows in my apartment and I've used them often. So I think people in a residential building should have the option of not having conditioned or filtered air but have fresh outside air. And for more important to me is how this park connects to the Greenway path. We get a bigger park with that part adjoining the greenway that goes around the building and wraps around between the main site and this. So we get a bigger part along with this. I also think, as they said, by moving the tower where it is, it will have less impact on the uh, apartments across the street because they're moving out of the shadow area. So I think overall, all things considered, the way it's positioned works better for the city and I think for residents and occupants um, within the building. Um, I was probably the most vocal opponent against the uh, 65th Street Bridge when it was designed and put in this location. I think it's the wrong location. I think it needs to be closer to Denny's and um, not quite to Powell Street, but more where the towers are, because that's where the people are. I lost that battle. I had to accept that this is where the city has decided to put this bridge. And I think this project is gonna help make that bridge more viable. We're gonna have more residents in the area it's going to be a destination with the park there. So it makes that bridge a lot more palatable for me than it has been in the past years. So I like that. I think your mix of uses is appropriate. I definitely agree uh, with Commissioner Simons that we do have a job balance um, problem, um, but it is not this project's um, problem to solve. And I think a 16 story tower with 144 units goes a long way to bringing residential in there. I know that as a city, Residential units cost more than they bring in than opposed to businesses. So we have to look at it as a financial standpoint as well. So I think this is a good balance. I'm actually impressed that you guys are serious at considering ground floor active space. Nowadays, air, people are looking for reasons to pull that out. So if you can find something to do with that space, I'm really pleased that you're doing something with that. I think the kiosk in the park is definitely a keeper, even if you eventually take it out of the, um, the housing. But I, I hope you can keep that in there because it is a viable thing, but it is a valuable thing, but it's viable viability is oftentimes really hard. Um, I, I would like, I like the parking. I don't know if you've changed the parking access since the DCC, but what you showed us with the current um, accessibility, I like that, that we only have three points of access. These are pretty big spaces. So I think that's kind of a minimum. Um, it's you guys are under, our maximum requirements. Those projects that we've had come to us always want to push that above. So I respect and appreciate that you're staying under our maximum. If you can look to reduce that anymore, I know there's a balance between with the market and I keep saying that we have to be the paradigm shift and force in the market to look differently. We are a transit rich community, even though we don't have BART, but everyone thinks BART is the end all be all, but a lot of these people will come from farther away. They can use Amtrak. Um, so we have a lot of viable options. So if you could just look at maybe throwing us a carrot, you know, and giving us a little less, that would be uh, very appreciated. And on that same tone, I would like to see a very creative and substantial transit uh, development management plan from you guys. What you're going to encourage your residents and your um, uh, 
employees at the building to you. So uh, please give us a very robust TDM. Um, and I think for now, I believe that's all I have. I just think it's a really good thing. I, I like the massing. I like the shape of the structures. I don't think you guys need to change anything. Just show us how you want to finish it off. And I really appreciate uh, Commissioner Young's remark. You know, you can take a nod and one of the buildings to our uh, industrial past, but I think maybe push the envelope, give us something a little more interest. Like you guys said, this is a gateway project. It's going to be visible from the freeway. So a lot of people pass by there. So, you know, I wouldn't go iconic or crazy, but maybe something really like, well, or I don't see that anywhere else. It could, could be a lot of fun. But we know we're going to come back and see another study session. So there'll be many opportunities for us to, to add our input. But I think you guys have done a very, very good job. And I think, um, for Longfellows to bring in a company like HEK to HOK to do this, I mean, that's really a top-notch uh, firm to do this. So we're really gonna, I think, get a stellar billing out of this. So thank you very much. And I'd like to ask the commissioners if they have any further questions or comments at this time. Um, okay, staff, um, staff, should we bring up the, the list of five things to see if we, I'll address those for you? Or do, or do you feel that we answered those? Miro, could you bring the questions up, please? Shh. I think she's working on it. <laughs> right. Can't find it. Yeah. <clears throat> I know I get passionate about the buildings and what they look like in Central Alpha. So I'll start off. I think the mixed use, we addressed that. I think that's fine. The site planning, um, we had some difference of opinion. You guys can um, maybe figure out, it. but I think you made a case for where the park is. I agree with it. Um, I think the way you've broken up the two office towers or commercial towers, I think is going to help with the wind tunnel effect. I think there'll be a lot of deflection uh, because of the shape of that. Uh, bonus points we'll need to get into. Um, I, I don't have a preference, um, but I think I, giving money for underground utilities is always important to me, but I, you know, we may be able to give you the bonus, the bonus points for the increased park, um, but yeah, come back and we can talk about that a little more. Again, I think the design overall project is, is wonderful, and I definitely think we can make all the findings for PUD, PDP, PDP. So, Commissioner Simons. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I think I addressed this in my comments initially, so I am good. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Chase. Yeah, I don't think I have any further comments. I agree with um, what, what you said, Commissioner Keller or Chair Keller. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else I want to add. Um, no, I think just the one last thing on the park is that um, Christie Park has become a real favorite and it's become a really iconic park for Emeryville. Like people know the whale park. And so I would that's something that I would just urge you to keep in mind if there's some sort of real um, unique draw that you can bring into the design of the park i think that will help put it on the map in a good way especially with the connectivity to the the bridge um i'm, I'm good i love that idea i think that's a very good idea i definitely agree with that commissioner young um I, I like the project a lot i think a couple places on bonus points would be on the opposite side of where that bridge that you guys are taking the people to be you know basically residents or uh, the public out to the other side maybe something to be a node there something really special that might be characteristic of something exciting that when you cross the bridge to the other side it's kind of neat maybe a platform on the bridge itself that the platform might be a place where possibly public art could be on but if not public art maybe some kind of um, a special viewing thing and yes the freeway is the freeway we're stuck with it and it's it's loud and it's obnoxious but you know we got you know, the people there's people who love trains there's people who love cars and you know maybe there's maybe there's some of that and then um i wanted to kind of like touch a little bit on how to think about the retail areas as well i think it's it, it's brilliant to have a um a, a node out in the middle of an area that acts as a as a as a, as a retail spot it gives an opportunity for someone to have a really serious uh opening there i think also um the long stretch of parking that would be, well, I guess it's perpendicular what would have been considered as the pr current proposal for the for the parking area. I think that's kind of neat too, and I think there's a there's with with that street coming around the new roadway that's coming around that corner. 
uh, making it kind of an opportunity for someone to actually have some uh, uh, possibly a store, possibly something, you know, make a couple shops or something. That would be an opportunity that'd be really neat. And um, I, I think too that the overall design idea is really neat. Uh, HOK has been around since I was a kid. I've watched that company do things as um, at the projects around the world, and I think I handed you guys to really um, continue to be a, a, a model. Um, be brave. Don't 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 necessarily hold back. I think um, Commissioner Keller. I, I I think you. I think there's a lot of things that I can identify with him in a lot of ways, and one of them is the fact that we live in an exciting place. This is a neat place. So don't be afraid to make this gateway be a gateway. If it's if that's what you're doing, go for it. Don't don't let it hold back. Thank you guys. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Um, I think we've gone through everybody. Uh, staff, is there anything else you need from us? Um, Commissioner Keller, if I may, I just would like to add a comment, which uh, Commissioner Chafe uh, made me think of. Uh, she mentioned Christie Park, uh, which is part of the Marketplace PUD. And I would say that uh, in uh, most occasions where we have a large public park that is part of a development project, especially PUD, we typically have a separate uh, community process just around the design of the park. We did that uh, for Christie Park. We did that for the Sherman Williams Park. So I will ima I would imagine that in the future, as this project gets farther along, we will have some kind of a public process just around the design of this park. So I just wanted to mention that. That'd be awesome. I think that would be a very good idea. How about the project team? Any, any clarifications you guys need? If anybody's interested in a dog, definitely no one who, uh, <laughs> no, I don't think we have any questions. Thank you so much. All right. Well, with we, that, I just, just ahead. to say that we, we do appreciate all the input here uh, in the dialogue. It's, it is really helpful to hear, um, from the, from the commission. Um, and, uh, and thank you for your time tonight. Uh, again, very much appreciated and looking forward to more of it. Great. Well, the next study session, a little bit more details. Uh, plant palette would also be helpful. We really don't have a landscape person on our midst anymore, so we've got to kind of keep mindful of that as well. So we, I mean, you have to follow the Bay Area, you know, Bay-friendly guidelines for plantings and stuff, I'm sure. But an example of the palettes and what you're envisioning for the next study session would be also helpful. So otherwise, great job, staff, great job, team, and we look forward to having you back soon. On that note, I will close this item and move on to Planning Commissioner comments. If you'd like to bring back Commissioner Mendez, Charlie. Thank you. I have sent her a text, so she should be rejoining us shortly. Assume we could go on with other commissioner comments. Wait. Oops, I like to give her a minute so she could be here to hear them. She like and all of that. <clears throat> she kind of missed the bulk of the meeting, unfortunately. Seems like her company does a lot of business in town. <laughs> oh yeah, she's everywhere. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate we missed a valuable input by her having to accuse herself. You did say okay, thanks. So she's I, on her way. She's connecting. Oh, she is. Okay. Good. There she is. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> so we are on the part of planning commission comments. So if we'd like to, uh, Commissioner Young, do you want to kick it off or do you want to talk less? Oh wow. Well, I, you know, Zoe. You know, thank you for uh, being, you know, I, I, what, COVID got in the way of us actually getting to really, you know, meet each other one-on-one. -on -one. Erica, uh, you know, just, we really didn't get a chance to meet, you know, and I, I just love the way all of you think. Henry, I, you know, just a couple times and I'm just, I'm just uh, there. And Miru, I run into once in a while. She's she's she works so hard, and it's thankless. And just work. She works and works. And but the presentations and you guys. Um, I mean, Emeryville's a neat place. Just like I said at that last thing, we have 
I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to return back to a normal life a little bit. Um, I'm li- living three time zones and I'm extremely exhausted all the time. And I think it affected me, but I tried to do as much as I could here. So thank you guys for, um, for, for just bearing with me and, um, everything that you guys have done. I, 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 I can see already that, um, that you guys are, I mean, all you, all, you know, and hopefully the new team that shows up, you know, coming around the next time can, can, um, carry a torch and, and Steven, I mean, you're going to lead a group. I mean, these are all fairly new people, Steven. So, you know, they're all with you. You're going to, you're going to have to kind of rein them in. And I, I just, I, I really wish I, I, you know, COVID got in the way of all of us. We couldn't really have a chance to, 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 you know, really bond that well, but considering if you see me around with like long hair and a beard or whatever, just, um, they definitely wave at me. Say hi. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chief, any comments? Uh, Commissioner Young, I'd just like to thank you for all of your amazing input and um, return your sentiments, but I'm really sorry we didn't get a chance to meet or serve in person. Um, I know it's been wonderful to learn from your expertise and your experience on the committee, and um, I do hope that we cross paths in other ways being involved with our community. So um, thank you. Commissioner Simons, any comments? Sure, I have two comments. One, uh, Commissioner Young, thank you so much um, for all your work with the City of Emeryville. I really enjoyed getting to serve on this commission with you. Um, and another exciting news, my fiance is having a baby a week from today. So hopefully I can show him on the screen uh, a month from now or whenever our next meeting is. So yeah. So on the other side. We have dog barking on the other side. We have a new baby. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank God the cool. baby didn't come early and you were able to make the meeting tonight. And by tonight, next you're meeting, like, oh. they're, they're, they'll already be here. <laughs> That's Very cool. Commissioner cool. yeah. Mendez, any comments? Uh, well, first of all, congratulations, Commissioner Simons. Um, excited to see your new baby on the screen <laughs> and to commissioner young um i'd just like to echo the sentiments that the other commissioners have said uh you will be missed i really appreciate your positive attitude um that was one of the best things about you you always came in with like very positive um attitude and great comments that i always learned from um and i'm sure that we we will run into each other around the city. Um, I hope once the city starts opening up more, we can uh, do more events and see each other there live. <laughs> but you will be missed. Thank you. You're real welcome. And yeah, and we can act, all of us can now interact without worrying about the Brown Act or any of that stuff. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, Very good. Um, well, my turn, Tito, and uh, now that we have some news from Commissioner Simons, congratulations and good luck with you on how that's going to be a major change in your life. <laughs> and, and Tito, thank you so much. You've always been a, a ray of sunshine, something different, you know, always a different vantage point, a different opinion on things, things that, you know, we may not always look at. So I appreciate that fresh perspective on things. Um, and you are like the last remaining person on the commission that I actually knew and worked with in person. Right. I met, I met Commissioner Chafe once at a distance about 11 o'clock at night on the raising <laughs> of the bridge. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I have never worked in person with any of these people other than you. And so right. it is going to be a new and different world out here. But you will be missed. Um, but know you are appreciated. And we're well, thank I'm, you. Guys. I'm hoping you will get some rest you know i know you're working really hard and all over the place so maybe not having commission meetings will give you an opportunity to rest um my next my next neat project is i'm working with unesco on the nazca lines in peru wow. oh fun so i'm doing i'm doing that i'm doing that kind of layout so um at least it's this time zone so it's one of the next things i'm up to <laughs> wow so <laughs> so you guys um you know let the developers know just be brave 
you know, just just let them. I, you know, if I'm I'm gonna just. This is a neat place. We we really live, we all want to live here. Think about the residents. Think about the other people looking at the building and the other way around. So think about those two. Just and if you and if you feel like it needs a balcony, you think it needs a roof garden. Darn it, say it. Think you need popped out windows and all this, and it just seems silly or it doesn't seem. You know, tell them. Just to, you know, and and Mr. Keller, one thing I want to say that I really like of all the. Th- things that you've ever said was if it's ever been built here don't let them do another one so <laughs> you know <laughs> so you know be cre- you know you, you said that you said that last I thought that was really thought that was really neat I think well, that's thank you I thought for sure you were going to say something about my anti experience well good I thought you were going to say something about my anti oh yeah. yeah no no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's not, you know, you know which material is material is material you know it's yeah. but, it, but um but, but thank you guys. And, and the last thing I want to say is Mr. Bryant, Charlie Bryant, um, you're, you're neat, man. Thank you very much for all that stuff that you do and whew, t- just ton of work. Wow. I don't know you guys. Okay. So thank you, Commissioner Young. I'll be thinking of all of you. Thank you much. Okay. Well, if that's thank all the comments, know. we can right. adjourn the meeting. Everybody at 8:20 p.m. I thank you all, and we'll see you next month.